Hi, my name is Mike Aben, and welcome to episode 50! <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I find it hard to believe. It's about a year ago I started making KSP videos, and at the time I just thought I'd give it a go, and I've been having just so much fun, but I've been finding it difficult to stop. And for those people that have been following along, well, I'm glad that you're enjoying these as well. Uh, but why don't we get on to what's going on with this particular episode. At the conclusion of the last episode, we left uh, Valentina and Bartner and Bob uh, just completing their exit burn from Minmus, and they're on their way back, and we'll be revisiting them uh, at a point in this particular video. But we do have a lot of other things coming up. We got uh, a, a mapping satellite that's going to be on its way to Minmus. Uh, I got a new jet plane, the Otter 3, that we'll be seeing uh, probably a couple of times. Uh, but right now, what I'm trying to do is to decide... What I'm going to do with the 507 science, I got a lot of science on the Karayan that's coming back from Minmus, and I did manage to transmit some of those, some of that before I started running into electricity issues with my lander. So I got 507 science with a lot more still to come. And I want to spend this, and I, you know, I'm not going to, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm looking at the strategies. Uh, you might recall a few episodes ago, I deleted the strategies that I had going because I realized that I wasn't building up enough reputation. And, uh, so what I'm doing is I'm looking at these strategies and thinking, you know what, I might spend my science on strategies, really kind of push the reputation along. Um, even the little bit of reputation that I've gained just recently, I'm starting to uh, get more contracts than I've been getting in the past, and I'm getting better contracts. So uh, I think, though, it needs a little bit of push. And what I'm really looking at is um, this open source tech this particular strategy converts some of the science that I earn into reputation. And I'm also taking a look at this appreciation campaign, which turns funds into reputation. And what I ended up doing, what I decided I was going to do, is I'm going to put the appreciation campaign up to 40%. So from now on, 40% of my uh, cash earned will be converted to reputation. And then the open source tech... I'm going to push up to 20%, which is the most that I can do, which will take 20% of future science earnings and uh, convert that to reputation. So I'm hoping this will push up my reputation gauge quite a bit, which will uh, unlock more and better contracts, which also will, in the flip side, um, advance you more funds as you accept those contracts, which does increase your cash flow. So although I'm spending money now and spending some science right now, this should, in the end, allow me to have more money. And speaking of contracts, why don't we pay a visit to the administrative building and start taking a look at some of these contracts. I actually don't want to spend really much time talking about them because you'll see these contracts as they come up. But I do want to point out that uh, before I could only carry, I was always getting 11 contracts and now we all got nine that are active. I got four here that I could pick up. So now I'm up to 13 mm -hmm. contracts and that's just with a little bit of extra reputation and this is going to keep getting better and better. But where I want to go actually right now is uh, very quickly to the Karayan. I recognized last episode that the Karayan has an inclination issue, and it's because Minmus is well north of uh, the equatorial plane of Kerbin, so there's no way around it. The, the orbit's going to come in incline, and that's an issue because I want to rendezvous with Kerbin Station, which is at an inclination of zero, and I thought I would just have to eat this inclination burn. So right now I'm just figuring out how much this is going to be. I've selected the moon as a target that will give me the equatorial ascending and descending nodes for, of my orbit in relation to Kerbin, because the moon has an inclination of zero, just like the equator does. And I'm playing around with the normal burn and discovering here, as you can see, that it takes about 150 meters per second uh, in order to get my inclination down to zero. So that then I can start thinking about performing my rendezvous with the station. And, uh, I mean, I can afford it. Uh, the Crying right now has 555 meters per second in it. But I thought, I wonder if I can do better. So what I did is I set up this node here. And what, this is just very shortly before the Crying. And I, I'm actually going to dial back the time a little bit to get it as, uh, you know, well, there we go. We're less than two minutes from the Karine right now. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to burn radially out. Oops, that's 100. I don't want to burn that much. Radially out. 
and that's pushing my trajectory further south. And what I want you to take note of is what's happening to the equatorial descending node. It's moving further and further away from a Kerbin. It's now out here in the middle of nowhere. There, uh, there we go, 21, 22 meters per second puts it out there. And the further out the equatorial descending node is from Kerbin, uh, the less a normal change is going to cost you because you will not be moving as quickly. The slower you're going, the more efficient normal corrections are. So I'm, I got another node here now at about where the uh, descending node is. And now I'm trying, and I'm just eyeballing this. I don't have much to go by, but I just want to get approximate sort of numbers. So I'm applying some positive normal here and just eyeballing what it looks like the plane of my orbit is going to be in as an inclination of about zero. And that's looking pretty close there. I'm right around 42 meters per second on that normal burn. The radial burn was 22 meters per second. That's a total of only 64 meters per second. That's well less than half of what it would have cost me if I did the burn um, close to Kerbin. So this is definitely a worthwhile thing for me to do. Uh, it would have been even more efficient if I thought about this while I was performing my ejection burn from Minmus, but uh, well, I can't dial back time, so what you're going to do? So I, as you can see, I've deleted the maneuver nodes. What I'm just going to do is I just pointed the Karai into the radially out vector, and I'm just going to do this without a node. So I'm just doing it with RCS, so we'll turn on the RCS and we'll just start burning. This is definitely one of these, like, the sooner the better, you know, thing to do. And what I want you to do is watch that descending node, that little yellow marker there. And you can see that it is moving up my orbit as I continue to push with the RCS. I'm just doing it with RCS because I want to conserve my my liquid fuel and the Karayan has a lot of monoprop. Speaking of which, I should keep an eye on it. I still have a healthy amount of monoprop. And you can see now the descending node is now out around the orbit of the moon. We'll just keep pushing. And this takes a little while, but there's no rush. There's no reason for a high degree of thrust here. Still lots of monopropellant left. Of course, all I'm doing is holding H while I'm doing this. I know it's hard for you to tell. But you know, I, I'm not getting, no. I don't think it's moving much anymore, so I'm going to stop. That, to me, looks pretty good. Turn off the RCS. So there, at that uh, descending node, I will be performing my uh, correction burn, getting my inclination down to zero. And then that should make my rendezvous with the space station much more efficient. And what we see here is MAPSAT-3, and MAPSAT-3 is on its way to Minmus. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time with this particular mission, except really to point out how spectacularly lazy I was in designing this one. I have been designing actually a lot of new craft, and these are going to be new craft you're going to be seeing over the next uh, two or three episodes because I've unlocked a lot of new parts. And when it came to this contract, I do have a contract to put a, a mapping satellite around Mimis. I got so lazy. This is exactly the same vessel uh, that MAPSAT 2 was, which went around the moon, and that was 66 game days ago. <laughs> so I didn't change one freaking thing. Um, which is in some ways a little bit unfortunate because at this point I do have the multi-spectral analyzer unlocked. Uh, that's the uh, ScanSat part that allows you to scan uh, for biomes and make a biome map. I didn't even care. I just said, not the hell with it. I'm just going to push this in the building queue and, and ship it off. And I put myself into an orbit inclined at 6 degrees. Uh, making sure that I launched when I was underneath either the ascending or the descending node of Mimis's orbit. Actually, I can see here, I must have been underneath the descending node because I launched six degrees towards the south. And that was, of course, in order to have my orbit around Kerbin match uh, Minmus's orbit. And then that way I don't have to make my inclination change in space where it costs me a whole lot more. And of course, we set up our transfer out to Minmus. You've seen that before. 
So here I am performing that particular burn. And actually, you can see the contract over there on the right. You can see that uh, I need to have a particular orbit. I need my altitude, a rough, pretty much circular orbit, a very low eccentricity with an altitude between 71 and 77 kilometers and an inclination between 79 and 80 degrees. So a pretty, a pretty specific orbit. So I'm just going to aim for now right at the center of Minmus and oh, 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 overcooked a little bit. And KSP doesn't seem to be able to tell whether I have an encounter or not. But you know what? I think what I'll do is I'll just uh, worry about this. i got to make a correction burn anyway, so we'll make a correction burn mid-course. That will actually get my trajectory so that I can insert this into that roughly polar orbit. But that'll be for later. For now, let's get ourselves over to my new jet plane. This is the Otter 3 taking off from the runway for the very first time. And there we go. And uh, just to give you a bit of an idea of just how much more powerful this thing is than my previous jets, here we are, vertical takeoff, no problem whatsoever. Uh, yeah, now, now, now those, those, the <laughs> careful viewer may note that actually I've had an Otter 3 before. You saw me testing an Otter 3 quite a number of episodes ago. This is not that same vessel. Uh, I had to make some changes to it um, because that vessel was actually built in 1.04. And when 1.05 came out, Squad juggled around a number of the aerodynamic parts and that old Otter 3 would no longer work, so I had to rebuild it. And this is the result. Another thing that has a little bit different is the old Otter 3 used the vector engines that came from D Dynamics. These very similar engines are actually new stock parts, and why don't we show their party trick here? There we go. Those are the, and we'll just turn them off. <laughs> oh, those are the afterburners, and I have them attached to the RCS action group, so when I press R, they turn on. Um, I have to be a little bit careful, though, because they do cons uh, dramatically increase the fuel consumption, and I do have a mission here. The mission that I have is to go over to the pyramids, which are about 700 kilometers away. And so I need to conserve my fuel. But uh, just to show, with the afterburners on, while I wasn't testing with this thing, I did put the, I pointed it pretty much straight up, put the afterburners on just to see what would happen. And I actually got this uh, flame out. I was, I had my apoapsis at about 40 kilometers. So you can actually uh, get this thing up to pretty respectable altitudes if you want to sacrifice fuel efficiency. Now this is actually not the first time I've had this contract. I had this contract actually 25 episodes ago when Svetlana went to visit the pyramids and most notably managed to completely destroy her aircraft yet walk away from the crash. So uh, I am hoping that on my return to the pyramid here I can um, make this landing a little bit less spectacular. And part of uh, doing that is going to be doing a better job of surveying the terrain in around the pyramids. So we're going to start off by doing a bit of a flyby here. Just buzz right over the pyramids. And you know what? I've been talking about this plane so much and the mission didn't talk about our brave crew. Uh, this is my first jet that can carry two crews. So I have a pilot and an engineer. Our pilot is Tamley Kerman. And our engineer is Glafia. Uh, mostly because she is the only engineer I have on the surface. Everybody else is in space. All right, so with that accomplished, what we'll do is we'll turn ourselves around. And what I am looking at is this valley over here to the left. There we go. To the left of where the pyramids is, are. That valley right there. I think I'm going to be able to just drop myself right in there. Okay, so I got my speed just a little over 50 meters per second, nice and slow. This thing glides very well. It is heavy though, it takes a lot to stop and... Oh, I don't know, how close is that hill? It's looking pretty close. Well, I'm still gliding at under 50 meters per second. Okay, I got a hill here, I can do it. Okay, flare up, flare, and just see if I can just stall it onto the hill. Oh, yeah! Oh my gosh. I'm very proud of that. <laughs> Ooh, I might be getting the hang of this flying thing after all. I don't build a lot of planes, but wow, that, that made me feel pretty good. 
Though a little later in this vi in this video, you'll be seeing this exact same uh, jet again. You might change your opinion of me at that particular time. But right now, all I got to do is turn myself around and get myself over to the pyramids. You know, the last time I was here was Svetlana. She came here to the pyramids on foot from the other side, and I completely missed this wonderful little statue here. It's beautiful. I love this. So let's get ourselves up nice and close to it. Okay, there we go. Let's put on the brakes. And then it's time to get Tamley out to fulfill this contract. All right, EBA, and oh, there's an inscription on the statue. Which creature has one voice and yet becomes four-footed and two-footed and three-footed? Same as last time. Okay, okay. A Kerbal! Oh, Gus, you ruin everything. We knew that. Well, a Kerbal, man. I knew that one, says Tamley. That was cute. I liked those little animations. That was kind of cute. Or the little, uh, little face things there. Okay, so we will take... A surface sample here at the mountains. Obviously, I couldn't take surface samples when I was here before. The other thing that's different from when I was here before, well, other than the fact that this time we do have a plane, is that that plane still has enough fuel in it to get us home. Yeah, even if Svetlana had uh, not crashed the Otter 1, she still wouldn't have been able to fly back home. She wouldn't have had enough fuel. But this thing has more than enough range to get ourselves back home. So we'll just throttle up, get ourselves out of here. And we're away. Yeah, this thing, it needs a lot of runway to land because it's so heavy, but it does not need a lot of runway to take off. Anyway, the return back to the Kerbal Space Center went without incident, so I think what I'll do is actually, I got a few other things I want to show you, but I want to briefly show you this. This, well, is just a spent descent stage. <laughs> it's really not that excited, and it's, it's coming back down to be recovered. Um, but... This is the first time I've splashed anything down since upgrading to 1.05. And one of the many changes that came in with 1.05 was a changed buoyancy model uh, for the water. So, um, actually, it, it, it makes a, a significant change now. Uh, landing in the water is not nearly as violent as it used to be. Yeah, landing in the water now is uh, significantly less stressful on your vehicles than landing on the land as it should be so here we are we're just about to splash down nice yeah I can tell you before 1.05 that would have done would have had a good chance of breaking that stage but uh, now nope nice and sweet and soft but anyway let's get ourselves out to Minmus so I'm just about into Minmus's sphere of influence and I'm just getting my contract ready here that I need to do. Again, I need to put myself into a specific orbit here and I'm getting some sort of weird oscillation. If you take a look at the nav ball, it's oscillating very just back and forth. I, I'm not the one doing that. I don't know why it's doing that. Oh, well, there we go. We are now in Mimesis sphere of influence. Still oscillating. Okay, let's just turn the SAS off. I'll have to deal with that later. Right now, I just want to survey us the situation here. So, my inclination is 86 degrees. And it's supposed to be between 79 and 80 degrees. I'll have to adjust that. My periapsis is about 66 kilometers. And I want it in between 71 and 77 kilometers. So, let's deal with the inclination first. So, I'm just going to get myself over to one of the normal vectors. I'm not exactly sure which way I need to burn. This is a bit of a a pain with uh with the oscillating that's going on here but anyway we'll give ourselves a little test little test puff okay that is bringing down the inclination so i am on the right normal vector so let's get it back on there again okay if you take a look over at uh, the pitch indicator over there at the bottom left that oscillation that's not me that's, I don't, I don't know what's going on with that, but we'll, I'm just going to burn. It seems to be oscillating on either side of the normal vector, and uh, let's see. Uh, okay, 80 degrees. We'll give it just a little bit more. Oh, 79.5. That's perfect. Don't touch a thing. Okay, so now I need to raise my periapsis. I'm going to do that by burning radially out, so I want to get myself down there onto that radial vector. I 
again, that oscillating, that's not helping. Oh, what a, no what a nuisance. Maybe, maybe it'll be easier if I turn the SAS off. Not, okay, and then I'm going to time work to stop my... Well, no, this is stupid. No, 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 forget it. Flight computer! Remote tech flight computer, I need you. <laughs> I've had this flight computer. This comes with remote tech. I've had it the whole series that you've been watching, but I've been pretty much avoiding it because, uh, I don't know, I've, I've been avoiding it because I didn't want to live beyond sort of the tech level of my pro bodies, but if I can't even point the way I'm supposed to go, then how am I supposed to do this? So there we go. I just put in a custom heading that will keep the, uh, the, the satellite perpendicular to the sun. So I have to make sure that it'll be fully charged while I think about what I'm going to do here. Oh, I'm trying to decide, should I, should I, I was going to burn just radially out, but should I burn radially out or prograde? Well, why don't we get back to flight computer and uh, we'll play around here. So let's push prograde. Okay, how's this work again? Radial, okay. Oh gosh, I gotta remind myself how this flight computer works. Okay, that doesn't seem to undo the custom part. Let's bring it up here. I gotta think about this. I can't turn off the custom. I push. Oh, there we go. You gotta push orbital. Now I got orbital control. So I just push radially plus, and that's radially out. And if I wanted to go prograde, I can push just the prograde button. See what I mean? How this extends beyond sort of the tech level of. Uh, your probe bodies. This particular probe body doesn't actually give me the radio out and in stuff or you know any of these uh, buttons at all. So um, you know what? I seem to recall the situation coming up before and the most efficient thing to do to be burning halfway between the radially out and the prograde vector. So let's see if I can get myself right there. So we'll put our pitch at 45 degrees. Oh geez that's good enough. And let's start Let's start burning here. Okay, why am I not burning? Oh, I see what happened there. I put my, <laughs> I have the, I have the flight computer selected. Okay, let's. Oh shoot, now I've completely messed it up. I typed X into pitch because I had this window selected. So let's put the pitch back at minus forty-five degrees. It should just make its way over there once it thinks it. There it goes. Okay. Now I have to click off of the flight computer window so that I have control of my vessel again. And now I can start throttling up. There we go. And I'm pushing up my periapsis height. And I'm shooting for about 74 kilometers. Boom. There. Done. Okay. 74 kilometers. That ought to do it. And we'll jump ahead here to periapsis. Well, I've already got my capture, and all I got to do is keep burning until I got my eccentricity down below 0 0.003. But of course, that was easy enough to do. And once that was accomplished, it was just opening up the altimeter and starting the scanning. And this thing, well, I guess it's got to stay stable for four hours and get 95% of the planet. I don't think it'll get 95% of the planet in four hours. So I'm not exactly sure when this contract will be complete, but it's on the road there now, so uh, it's time for us to move on. And here we are with the Otter 3 once again with our scientist Carol and Stella! Yes, Stella's going to be our pilot. It's actually nine game days since the last time you saw this plane, so it has been rebuilt. That's actually despite the fact that uh, I do have two service bays. And it went into the lesser of the two service bays. I got an Otter 4, which is another plane, another new plane, uh, being built as well. But even being in the slower of the two service bays, it was able to be built before the Otter 4 got built. I do have a contract, and the contract is to do some seismic scanning. Uh, there's, uh, it's one of these ones you got to get down to the ground. There's an alpha, beta, and a gamma. And that's why I got Carol, our scientist, along, because there should be some decent science being collected. We'll get a waypoint manager here. We'll pick our the closest one. There we go. N06 K27 Beta. I choose you. Okay, it's pitch up. There we go. Whoa, 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 whoa! Uh, pitched up a little bit too violently. 
Okay, so we are only about 600 kilometers from our waypoint. That's that's less than the distance it was to the pyramid. So this should be easy enough. Just got to put it down, collect some seismic. Oh, uh-oh. A control surface is stuck. Okay, I can see it's this early on at the back here. And whoa, 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 come back. Okay, okay, I think I'm okay. What's on this side? They're all inactive. So, ah! Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Okay, cut thrust. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. We are, we are, we are most certainly falling. <laughs> oh, no, we are most certainly falling. Okay, so when you're falling in this situation, the thing you want to do is point yourself in the direction that you're falling. So I just selected the prograde vector. Maybe I can get some roll action out of these uh, canards at the front. I'll select those. Uh, no, I need to throttle up. I need to get some speed and point myself down and pull myself out of this dive. So there we go. Pull up. I have just made the decision. I am aborting this mission. I am not going to go, whoa, oh no. <laughs> oh dear, come on back. Ah, I am definitely aborting this mission and my whole objective now is to just see if I can get Carol and Stella back but before that I gotta pull out of this dive okay, those guys are inactive and it doesn't make sense no I best leave the other one alone the one on the left side because if I have one of them going and the other one not that would be a bad situation okay I am back in control so now I need to turn myself around Nursing this thing home was certainly not one of the more fun things I've done in KSB before. This was not easy. And I was wondering if perhaps when, uh, dang it, disables that uh, Aeron at the back, if uh, perhaps it removes its ability, its lifting ability as well, and that shifted the center of lift forward before the center of mass, because this thing became crazily unstable. Now I wasn't helping myself out by because what I was doing is I was playing with the various lifting surfaces trying to see if I can compensate for the lack of roll. Like I was giving roll control to the canards at the front, I even gave roll control to the rudders, but the probably the most what ended up being the most foolish thing to do is I I turned down the gimbling on these uh, jet engines thinking, you know, because the whole thing felt really, really twitchy and unstable and I thought maybe that would make it more stable if they were less gimbaled. But, well, you can see here how well that went. <laughs> I also was regretting my decision to uh, uninstall Vanguard parachutes. I used to have that installed, but I was finding I could never get it to work, so I uninstalled it. I mean, so these, these folks have no choice but to try and land this thing. Uh, I thought about ditching it in the water, but... Uh, because it's supposed to be easier now, but uh, I never tried it before, so I thought this would not be a good first thing to try here. But in the end, I did end up getting it back, not to the runway, but just to the flat area that's in around the Kerbal Space Center, and uh, that was good enough for me. So as this thing goes rolling to a stop, we'll draw this episode to a close. I thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.